Well, I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. I mean that we're I think we're still waiting for one more, but they will they'll join us shortly. Um, so hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome hi. to uh, the January 11th uh, Bloomington Arts Commission meeting. Um, uh, let's go ahead and start things off by reviewing the minutes for our December meeting. Um, has have we all gotten a chance to review the minutes from the December meeting? And do we have any calls for uh, revisions or edits or changes needed for the meeting or for the for the minutes? No. No. Okay, great. Um, uh, can I get a a motion to approve the minutes? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I second. Okay. Excellent. Great. Okay. Thank you. And. Um, yeah, as, as noted, a, a quick note, as you know, as we had at the last meeting, um, Nick is now the, the secretary for the Bloomington Arts Club and will be taking, taking notes for us. So thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Um, okay, now moving on to the financials. Yes. Why is my screen sharing closed? Awesome? Um, let me try this again. All right, I don't know why that is yeah. happening. Um, have you all, do you all have the financials? I included two documents in. Um, the, if you're all okay, comfortable just looking at those on your laptops, I can just talk you through. Um, so I put, I'm sorry that that's happening. Um, so, also please hold on while I negotiate technology. So I put two documents in this month's packet. Um, and so as I mentioned at the end of the last meeting and last year, um, because so many of those grants payments were happening like as part of the last claim cycle of the year, we weren't just seeing that reflected in the budget as it stood. And so now, thank goodness, all of those payments have been made so I can share an accurate just a uh, snapshot of where we actually ended up. Just okay. So I'm gonna start by talking about where we ended up. Um, so, all right, here we go. Okay, so going way back to last January, um, we started out with two basic budget lines to draw from. Um, one was the overall grant allotment from the city. Um, and so that consisted of $40,000, $40, which was our 2022 annual allotment, um, just over like 29,000 for our carryover allotment from 21, which we were able to keep. And then that 2%, like roughly $832. Um, in addition to that, which totaled $69,223, we had $80,000 allotted from the BUA to spend. So from those two large chunks of money, we spent a total of $63,280 from the BAC city's general budget. Um, so that left us with a total of $5,943. I'm gonna explain to you why that is there. There were some grant recipients who, in spite of my best efforts to email and call and slide into DMs, <laughs> I just could not rally paperwork that was necessary to get those payments out. Um, so unfortunately, that roughly $6,000 was reassumed back into the city's I budget. Yeah, it, I, I was seriously like, it's a dollar, it's our, you know, our, so, and, and you know, and I, I, I feel like, you know, I did, like, there, there were definitely some payments for, like, you know, we, you know, it was like, you know, an arts project, so, you know, I, I think, like, one thing I can do better this year is just, hey, Susan, um, is just following up with those folks, like, in a more timely manner. I think our grant software that we're going to be deploying this year will also help with that, but it just meant... By the time these messages started going out in the last two months of the year, I was just coming up empty. Um, so that's why you see that $6,000 again. That has been 
like reabsorbed into the city's overall budget. There is a chance that later in this year, in the second or third quarter, that they will give that money back to us. Um, that used to be a pretty typical annual thing that happened. A lot of our budget lines that were completely spent down about halfway through the year, council would vote to reappropriate those funds. That kind of stopped during COVID, and we're not sure how they're going to approach that this year, but I will keep you updated. Ali, I'm just curious. Was, was most of that emerging artists? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I feel like it was split pretty evenly, oh, except with the exception of that last emerging artist arts project grant cycle. I feel like most of the funds were spread out pretty evenly amongst arts projects, that first really strong emerging artist project grant cycle and the um, operations grant cycle. So, it, and I think we kind of made a concentrated effort to make sure that we weren't overloading one of those cycles with too much no, money. I say the people who, who didn't do. Oh, great question. No, it was all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it was surprising. There was really no okay. rhyme or reason to it. Okay. So, yeah, it was, it was interesting. How, how long did yeah. people have once they were notified before the end of the year? Could that be? Um, no, that's a great question. So uh, actually, so the last two cycles of the year, so operations and emerging artist arts projects, those are all paid out. Um, it was more the emerging artists and arts projects grants that we had. And you know, so they had more time than those last oh. two cycles. You know, so and I, I, I sometimes I'm like, well, you know, was it just because, you know, I felt this like upcoming deadline, you know, with our last arts project grant cycle just to like, oh, my gosh, really hound them. But, um, you know, again, we'll just keep monitoring that in this new year and hopefully do a better job of actually getting those funds out the door. But I just did want you to understand why that roughly six thousand dollars is still there and I will keep you informed about whether or not we get any of that back. Well, a lot of, there were a lot of projects that the money was being used as a portion of the project and maybe they just couldn't come up with the rest of it. I, I feel like there were also a few artists that just left town. Um, so I think that also might have had something to do with it. So, yeah. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about um, the BUA zone arts grant line. So again, this is where we're seeing, so that 80,000 is made up of both 2021 and 2022 allotments to us. So that was 40,000 each year. We spent just under 40,000, which means we technically have that $40,000 left over, but the BUEA's budget works a little differently than the city's budget. So basically that 40K is going to be reabsorbed into their overall budget and we don't necessarily have access to funds the way that we would with city council's budget line for us if they chose to reappropriate those funds later this year. Um, and so, and I can share, so the reason why we had $80,000 last year is because I was very new in the position at the end of 21 and I just really worked hard to convince the BUEA to let us keep that 40,000 and then learned that they are not as free flowing with their funds as we are unlike us you know I feel like we do our best to get all that money out the door you know we want to be able to demonstrate council that there is a need and that we're fulfilling that need we want to show them that we can zero out so they continue to give us that much or more money with BUEA it's not necessarily the case so I just chose not to pick that fight this year. I just don't think it's worth it. I think um, as we kind of learn what happens this year, we can reassess that. Um, if we do come across some initiative or some amazing grant that pushes us over the 40K they have allotted us for 23, we can always make the case to them to let us use some of their other available grant funds that hasn't been allotted to some kind of specific project they're looking to fund. So that's always an option. I'm not 100% optimistic that we'll take advantage of that, but it is an option if we want to explore it. Any questions? Okay, great. Uh, so that that's 22. Let's look at 23. Okay. Um, okay. And again, I'm so sorry this isn't up on the screen, y'all. Okay. So, um, all right. So, in the past, we have been given. $40,000 to work with from the city. Um, this year we have a little more. 
This year from the city, we have $65,000. Um, I'm going to tell you what that's, that includes. So that includes a couple of different things. That includes $50,000 of grant funds from the general budget. So council approved us getting $10,000 more a year than previous years to spend on grants. Um, so again, that's $50,000. Um, the other $15,000 of that is our um, local income tax increase. So when uh, the Office of the Mayor and others were pushing um, you know, the vote through council to increase income tax, we all had to come up and say, if you were to increase income taxes, this is how we would spend the money. And one of the lines I put in there was for arts grants and then public arts projects. Um, and that was overall just over $31,000, and they approved that. Um, so I took 15,000 of that and just added it on to our grants line from the city. $65,000 is basically what we spent last year in grants. And so I just thought, we know we can spend this. We'll do our best to do it again. I've shared this with Elliot. I know that it took a lot of effort <laughs> to get all this money out the door and a lot of effort by all of our grant reviewers. Um, we feel like we can do it again. We're not facing this pressure of the extra $40,000 from BUEA to work with. So I'm confident that it won't be difficult to spend um, that $65,000 from the city plus that 849, which is our 2% annual increase, um, plus the 40K that VUEA has given us. Um, so overall, we'll be working with just over $100,000 to be able to give out for BAC grants this year. Um, as part of the local income tax increase, I also put a couple other budget lines in there for us. Um, one of those is for emerging artist professional development. You know, as I've spoken with folks in the community, and I think especially as we were reviewing grant applications in our last grant cycle, we learned that some folks could use some help and just you know demonstrating their qualifications in a grant application and telling us what they want to do and um, you know I also think you know as we're focusing on emerging artists you know and artists who are just kind of coming into their own I feel like there are other types of services and workshops we can provide just to help them level up professionally. And now we have a budget to do it. That means we can pay folks to lead these workshops. We can get some refreshments, we can like Hey, I fell a hundred bucks to let us use their space if we want to. Um, so we've got five thousand dollars to play with there. Um, and then we also have sixteen thousand five hundred dollars for public art and grants. So this is thinking about as we're releasing the public art master plan um, in the early months of 23, and as we're doing more initiatives to work with local neighborhoods to put works of public art in their neighborhoods, we have this money to supplement that. This is also as we're thinking about doing a neighborhood festival this year, we can use some of these funds to help pay for the costs of that. So that is what that 16,500 is earmarked for. I have not taken the time yet to think more strategically about how allocations of that will work but that is work that I will continue to do in the first months of the year, and I will probably be asking you all to help me think about what that looks like and what the protocol and practices should be for allocating that money. So that's what I've got. Again, I'm sorry I can't show you these numbers on the screen, um, but I am happy to answer any questions about the 23 funds as well. Yes? Um, is there a reason to not have um, workshops for organizations? as well as emerging artists. So I, I, I think that's great. I think anybody, yeah, thank you for asking that question. Let me clarify, this, all are welcome. It's not, okay. it's not just for emerging artists. Okay. And I, again, I think we can just, we can work together right. to figure out the details of this just to make sure you're catching my blind spots like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, some of the um, more, em more recently emerged emerging artists yeah. could really use professional development in terms of presenting themselves, et cetera. Some of the organizations can use help in how do you make an actual budget and how do you, you know, just proposal yeah. development yeah. Mm -hmm. itself. Um, so those can be two separate things. I see that, that's yeah. really helpful. Thank you, Suzanne. Yeah. We, we had discussed this about three years ago, two years ago, whatever, and then, we, and then COVID happened because we were talking about doing a series of workshops maybe once a month to do this kind of thing. And if you're talking about like a, a, one of the things like a program for organizations or not, 
Um, we, used to, we used to do this. We did a nonprofit one. We did individual ones at SCORE. We did them at the library because they have the, we actually started in one of the smaller rooms and then we had to move to the um, big auditorium because we had so many people who were there. And there are like a half a dozen guys who, and I'm sure there's a couple of good women too. <laughs> no, I mean, um, folks. <laughs> folks. Um, to, who I'm sure who would be really happy to do this. So if, if, you know, if you put together the kind of things you'd like, I have a whole list of, of what we had done before, but if, I'd be happy to collate it into something more if everybody just send me loosely, you know, what, what you'd like to see covered, you know, the kind of thing, because I think it could be done real, you know, just as simply to do it. The library's great for doing that. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, well, Holly, I'm going to turn to you again for item number three as the staff update. Sure. Okay. Um, so uh, I wanted to just give you an update on a little rearranging in the office of the mayor. Um, and so probably as many of you know, uh, the former deputy mayor of the city, Don Griffin, is running for mayor in uh, this year's election campaign. Um, and he decided that it would be best to focus on his campaign this year, and therefore at the end of the year he stepped down from his position as deputy mayor. Um, and so now he is focusing on his campaign. Um, so uh, Mary Catherine Carmichael, who was in kind of the city's communications, public branding role, has taken over as deputy mayor for this year. And Kaisa Goodman, who was actually formerly a colleague of mine in ESD when I started as special projects manager, which is the role Chaz now has, um, she moved up into the mayor's office and was acting as the mayor's chief of staff. She has now replaced Mary Catherine Carmichael as the overall communications, branding, kind of mouthpiece of the mayor's office for the city. She is also doing the job as um, chief of staff for the mayor as well while they find somebody to replace her. So. I'm sorry, what's her name? Her name is Kaisa Goodman. Kaisa. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on in the mayor's office. Um, and so, you know, when I am thinking about, you know, my work with the city, Kaiza and Mary Catherine are really my two go-tos at this point, and it's primarily Kaiza who helps me just get things up to the mayor's office. Um, I also uh, wanted to just thank you all for your feedback about the gateway projects that you all gave in December. I did share that all with the Parks Department. They were incredibly gracious to have it, and I think they took it really seriously. I'm going to be meeting with Tim Street, who is Parks' lead on that project next week, um, just to talk about next steps, and I'll keep you all informed as that process moves forward. So thanks again for your feedback, and that's what I've got. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Um, okay, um, Nick, sorry to have to ask you to talk and, <laughs> and, and note take, but um, uh, item number four is a bylaw task force status update. Yeah, um, honestly not a lot of pro progress since last month. I think that we had, um, and a lot of this is with me, I think we had the ambition of uh, doing like a full review of our notes and the supporting document um, and getting that to everyone in advance of this meeting so we could have a deeper discussion. Um, last, it, it, Holly's gotten away, uh, I, I think the, the short version of it. And I think that um, I, I saw some updates in the document today, like uh, Chaz adding some notes um, with regard to her, her mm -hmm. role. So I think um, all that needs to happen is I'm about halfway through this. I need to, to finish doing sort of like an A, B of, um, like raw meeting notes from all of our meetings to this point. Um, and that supporting document, just make sure we're not missing anything. And then we'll get that in front of everybody and we can get this thing buttoned up. Perfect, yeah. I think we have, we have a meeting, I think this Friday. Um, Do you want me to come to that meeting still? Would that be helpful? If you are available, okay, that would be yeah, great. It's on my calendar. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Nick. Um, any questions about the, about that before? Um, yeah, like I, I, I think, like Nick said, the plan is to have something up to the group um, for, with, with, with enough time to look over it um, and discuss it uh, in, um, at the February meeting. So, 
But any questions about it now? Excellent. Great. Um, okay. Uh, to Natalie for an update on the world of public art. Sweet. We're having fun over here. Um, <laughs> we had a really um, productive meeting uh, the other uh, last Friday. Um, we kind of just went through um, looking ahead to the coming year and just everything that we have in store. And it's a lot. We have a lot of projects on the, uh, coming through the pipeline, um, a lot of uh, things to celebrate, and a lot of just um, projects to look forward to. So that was great. Um, we also had a, a conversation um, with Michael from Legal about the right of way um, situation. And that was really good uh, and insightful, I think, for all of us. But just kind of looking to February, um, we will have the public art master plan released in February. Um, I think right now there's just a few um, loose ends to tie up, but that is essentially ready to go. And then um, our public art uh, subcommittee meeting will be on site uh, at an arts incubator space in the um, Brutalist building over on Rogers Street. Um, so I'll send more information about that to the subcommittee group, um, but we'll be meeting there. And uh, in April, something to start kind of ruminating in um, or marinating in is we will be celebrating the goat farm um, piece with a ribbon cutting and just starting to think about what kind of groups we want to incorporate in that, um, who we want to reach out to, and what other things that we just want happening in tandem with that celebration. So um, the subcommittee is going to start talking about that and planning that. Um, and then just further out to summer and fall, we have some exciting, um, I know I mentioned in the last meeting the National Science Foundation murals that will be going up. Uh, Holly and I are still speaking with those folks about getting some of those details further solidified, but that's going on. And we also have a really exciting um, new uh, opportunity to work or to get some more mules up uh, at the Duke uh, substation. And so there's, um, they've, essentially Duke has indicated a decision to fund it um, and and they're negotiating the details of that funding. Uh, but we'll have more updates on that in the next like three months or so. So things are moving. Um, a quick question about the Public Arts Master Plan is yeah. when you say release it in February, what do you mm -hmm. mean by that? I think that just means like putting it on like the website essentially, right, uh, Holly, like circulating it uh, maybe on our social media, getting it into the hands of some folks, like some key partners, things like that. Uh -huh. But I think a lot of what comes along with it is like statements from some folks in the mayor's office that I think they're just trying to get okay. solidified, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I mean, I think once we're all happy with it and we put it out publicly, I, I do think that the public art subcommittee should take some time to strategize about how we're just making sure people understand that this is a toolkit that folks can work with and how they can take advantage of it to think about putting work in their neighborhoods. Um, and again, as we're thinking yeah. about that new line in our budget of just over $16,000, thinking about how we can say, oh, also there is this pot of money you yeah. can potentially draw from to activate something in your neighborhood. Um, I mean, is, is, is this a, um, sorry to, to potentially slow this down um, and, to, and, to, and, uh, but, uh, and to ask the question as chair, but this is I'm sort of new to the um, how the public arts committee works, but um, is, before it goes like fully public, is this something that we would want the rest of the um, commission to, to look at or? It's a great question. I think we should. I, I feel like we're, we're kind of at the point where we don't want like drastic changes. I think sure. Gerard, you and I talked about like potentially adding a little more language about per performance art, which I feel like yeah. is fair and we can continue that discussion. But I do think um, once we're, the subcommittee is happy with it, I would like to share it to the full commission just to take a look at it, you know, give us our general yay or nay, or oh my gosh, how could you not include this? Sure. You know, we're not on any like, you know, crazy deadline to get this out of the door. I would just okay. like it to be sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, a, another element of this, knowing that we now have this right of way protocol for, you know, paintings and things going, you know, on the sidewalk or in the roadway, I've also asked legal to look at this document before we release it. I just want to make sure that everything we're saying in the document aligns with that protocol and we're not out of order with that. And they're aware that that's coming. So. Yeah, I, I would think that would be the most important thing in yeah. junk, you know, everything you said. Yeah. You know, just to, you know, this has been worked on for about 
three years yeah. at least. Yeah. <laughs> at least four years. Yeah. It's had a lot of input from a lot of, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of people. So I about. I, I just, <laughs> Get it out there. It's like the feasibility study. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> get legal approval. <laughs> yeah. Glad that your performance are yep. being addressed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Perfect. Um, any other notes or questions uh, for Natalie or the Public Arts Committee? Fabulous. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Back to you, Holly. Uh, uh, on an update on behalf of Elliot um, on, on the Grants Committee. Once again, we'll never be as fashionable, cool, <laughs> or widely world traveled as Elliot, Josephine, Layla. But um, <laughs> so, um, uh, so uh, getting ready when uh, she's back next year, completely jet lagged, to meet with Gerard and tar start planning for uh, the 2023 grant cycles. There will be three of them, not four, um, and they will run roughly over the same period of time that they did last year. We'll kick things off. I think the first grant cycle is slated to open February 20th or 21st, um, and that'll be arts projects. We'll do an emerging artist, or we'll do, I think we'll do emerging artist, and then we'll do operations as the last cycle, but again, just trying to round it out and get the money out the door. I'm going to be a little more ambitious and say, let's try to get it out by Thanksgiving. So again, we're, we're just giving everybody mm -hmm. a break who might want to take a little time off in December. Um, so, uh, but, uh, so we'll be working, you know, both on the details of what those grant cycles are going to be like. There was, there's been a lot of conversation in our grant subcommittee meetings about how we can make the applications better. You know, again, how we can set our applicants up for success. Um, so Elliot's going to be leading some task force um, in this year to do that work to just make sure we're being as robust as possible. And again, she'll also be taking the initiative um, to really work with you all to shape what these different types of workshops look like. So, yeah. And also, also a better rubric for us for... Yes, that is, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, could you just repeat the order of the cycles? That's been yes, determined? Uh, arts project, emerging, and then operations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent, man. We are we are cruising through this today. Um, I think yeah. I, I think this meeting is is a little bit lighter than than, than some of our other ones. But um, all right, cool. Uh, I will go ahead and give a couple um, a couple announcements here. Um, from the, from the chair section. So one is um, Holly and I met um, this past Friday and and, and just talked about um, a, a whole wide range of things related to the to the commission. And I think one thing that we um, that has come up enough, both like in our discussions here at the commission and sort of just like more broadly from I, I think like the, the broader Bloomington art scene just. In, in some of the people that I've talked to both like in my work at the council and also like in my role as commissioner and I think that like Holly is hearing a lot is just like the idea of um, uh, or the uh, of, of, of communications and so how how resources and things are presented um, and I don't think the the commission doesn't need to um, necessarily take responsibility for the <laughs> full scope of how um, uh, events and concerts and performances and resources are, are, you know, communicated across the city. But um, with the with the resources that we have and the work that we do and the the sites that we maintain, um, I think there's there's work to be done there and to make sure that um, we have a plan and a process for making sure that those are are, are well maintained, are updated. Um, and that they're, you know, re reflecting the things that that we want up there. And so, um, I would like to. Um, I'm, I'm not going to build this today, but just want to put the notion out there that I would like to put together a task force. I think in the um, in the coming weeks and months to sort of come up with, I guess, a communications plan for the commission that just sort of gives us a sense of of, of what our priorities are. And and how uh, what resources um, are available to us, 
um, and then um, and, and and the plan for utilizing those resources and sort of like meeting those like pri prior priorities and goals for um, uh, for our, our our commission communications. Um, so, um, any initial thoughts or ideas about um, about that? Yeah, I, I think it's a, a good and important idea, but I would suggest a couple of things. Number one is that anything that we do, we we treat it like we're a corporation or a company. We set dates for it, that this is what we're going to do, this is when we want to have the plan and when we're going to do it. So things are not, I think we've been a little bit more open-ended on, on stuff, and I think that's really important to not continue that. Uh, so that's one. Second of all, I think the the um, for the def the, there. What's important is what is it that is necessary for me to for us to communicate, and the points you made about we're not all things to all people. We are not doing a calendar for the town. Right. We're not doing this group. All we're doing is the work of the arts commission, right. which is essentially communicating about uh, grants and grant opportunities, mm -hmm. about public art and public art commissions, mm -hmm. and whatever our particular BAC openings or projects are. Right. So it's really fairly simple. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And I just, I know how I, w with the, the Paint Bloomington, I just, um, I, I, I operate under the KISS theory, you know, keep it simple, stupid. And, <laughs> no, and just, the uh, and and basically used Facebook because it was the most you know obvious have one banner that we designed that is that we use continuously that says what we are so I think everybody should kind of think about how they would like that to look you know it would have our little I think Facebook allows you a little round uh, logo or whatever here. So the banner, you know, we've got a lot of creative people I'm sure can come up with ideas for what the banner should look like. That banner goes on your Facebook page, and then you also use that uh, when we start developing MailChimp or whatever we're using. For letters that go out, that's fine. And then we do it also for a... Uh, um, three-column newsletter that basically says whatever the cycles are and again the same banner etc and then we just promote it whether it's on our Facebook page that you have a Facebook page it's a business page so everybody can't put their junk and we don't get you know right. Babette saw her kid today <laughs> on it <laughs> which is why nobody ever looks <laughs> right and uh, and that's it. I don't think it has to. It it, it should be brain surgery. No, I don't think it should be brain surgery. But I I, I would I I do think it's important. I think it's similar. And I and I think sort of mm -hmm. using the the bylaws task force as a model. Like I think we did a really good job of like s setting a schedule, sticking to it, and like yeah, like we don't um, we like you know the the commission has a fairly you know like a simple structure. Um, and kind of a, a like a, a relatively focused scope of work, mm -hmm. um, but it was still important to have have um, have it laid out and have and have the plans there, both for us and for yeah. you know and for folks. So I I, I do think it I, it would be um, important to just like have a group that sort of like establishes the priorities and establishes a, a way of maintaining because like these things are like easy enough to get started and kind of like keep going, with, but then it's like. Mm -hmm. um, just yeah, ha having sort of like a list and a set of dates and sort of like knowing like okay like you know like um, these things need to be done by this time or you know every uh, every so often and knowing who is supposed to do it. I think also communications is one of these things for the commission that doesn't really fall on any particular person or group. Um, and so I'm thinking that this plan will hopefully help um, help establish that. So. I have a thought question. I don't, you know. Maybe this functions like the uh, bylaws task force, where um, Holly is spared from most of it in, until the end. But it, it does feel like a, an important part of that will be identifying like what the city's role is in communication. Like I think going back to the public art master plan, yeah. we didn't say it explicitly, but like 
I don't know what the threshold is for a press release to be sent from the city. That probably crosses the threshold, right? You know, is it, is it a public document we're supposed to maintain? Um, you know, w we do that for grants and like RFQ calls. Right. That probably crosses the threshold. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, not that we need to like litigate every example in that task force, right, but like exactly. drawing some markers yeah. like that, you know, to be clear about like, here's what we can ask of the city. Here, like to sort of a vet's point about like not, not all things, all people. Here is the very specific role of um, the BAC, and then here is what is left to other people, or here is the direction we can point people, right. you know, to, to reach audiences in other ways. Yeah, I'm 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 hoping it will be a, a, a fairly simple and straightforward plan. Um, it doesn't need to be overly ambitious. Um, but yeah, like clarifying those things, like the scope of, of what it is, will be really important. So, um, just wanted to. Not looking to assemble that today, but just wanted to get that note out there that that's going to be um, a, a priority that I'd like to um, add to the list of, of, of things that we're doing. Um, and so for folks to sort of think of ideas and also you know gauge your own interest and capacity for for being a part of this team. Um, cool. And then. Um, uh, the second thing is just we, I think we have a couple of commissioner vacancies that we're going to be looking to fill, um, Brian and Corey. Um, and, um, you know, if, if there are any folks who you think would be good applicants, uh, applicants for those, um, please have them uh, submit an application and have them come talk to, um, if, if, if they are interested and, and would like to talk to someone, I'm happy to, um, Document. And um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> do, we, do we have any at this point? Anyone, anybody interested? We have several applications. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, but um, I, I think th they're just you know a, a mixture of folks in the community, folks I think um, others you know past and present commissioners have recommended apply. Um, but um, if there's Anyone else um, you haven't already had a conversation with that you think would be great, please feel free to reach out to them. Um, you're also always welcome to shoot me an email just to let me know if you know someone has put an application. Yeah, in. Well, that's what yeah no, just no. you know, just so <laughs> just so I know I can go in there, you know, and just make sure you know that council is aware that that application is in there. Um, so yeah. Brian, he was talking to someone, I cannot remember her name, but she was absolutely fantastic yep. in the, that grant cycle. Yes. That was, do you know what? I, I, I know, about. yeah, yeah, and I have been in communication with her. She about was this. fabulous. Yeah. 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 So those are my, my two notes there. Um, wonderful. So if there aren't any other questions or anything on that, we will, let's go ahead and move to commissioner announcements. Anyone have anything that they would like to share about things that maybe um, took place over the holidays or that is upcoming? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to go last. <laughs> 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 what, 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 um, what is it again? A, a, a Bach? Bloomington Bach Cantata Project. Oh, okay. We fund them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, disclosure, I'm married to the director. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not why I think it's fabulous. They are, they are fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. They are fabulous. They are. At St. Th St. St. Thomas's. St. Thomas, it's at 2.30. Two um, it's, it's a 20-minute performance, then a talk about the music in the context, et cetera, then a repeat performance. Kind of a, oh, like, cool. learn by hearing. Oh, sure, yeah. It's in like the process, yeah. Oh. You hear it differently. Really the performer cool. sometimes play it differently after hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's an hour. It's good after brunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll go ahead and go next. Um, two quick things. Um, so one one is I, I think I I got responses I think from just about everyone um, in the group about the um, BCT gala um, 
uh, I think as I noted at our last meeting, um, uh, commissioners and liaisons have, have two um, complimentary tickets. Um, if, if, if you haven't written to me about those and are, are interested in, in attending and going, please let me know. There, there's still time to claim those. Um, but that takes place on the evening of January 28th at the Busker Chumley Theater, celebrating its, its 100th year anniversary um, uh, of, of, of opening its doors, um, initially as the Indiana Theater, but now as the Busker Chumley Theater. And then I think, I haven't, uh, I think we will have a meeting before then. Um, Yes, I think our, our meeting in February is on the 8th. On that 9th, um, I believe the um, uh, one of Chaz's artist, uh, Chaz is going to host another artist party. Um, and the Arts and Human, IU Arts and Humanities Council is supporting that party. And it will be, um, in a lot of ways, like the other wonderful arts parties that, um, that uh, that Chaz has, has put on and hosted. This one in particular is gonna be used to sort of like celebrate the, the, the public announcement of, of Grand Falloon, um, which will be taking place later this summer, but we're gonna be announcing sort of the, the headliners and sort of like key partners and, and highlights of that festival that week. And then, you know, in, in supporting that party, bringing some of our partners to that and, and just sort of like formalizing a in-person announcement. And we'll have, um, folks there and I think some activities and stuff related to, to the things that will be going on in Grand Saloon. So that's the evening of February 9th. Details still TBD, we're, we're, we're working those out, but we'll, we'll have more info there soon, but something to just put on your calendar. Sweet. I've got a few. Um, Monday at the BCT, there's going to be a wonderful MLK um, celebration. I just, uh, I think, I mean, I'm going to go, but I was just speaking with Dr. Raymond Wise over at the African American Choral Ensemble. I know they're performing. I don't quite know um, what the rest of the program entails, but um, I think there's a dance group um, and keynote speaker, things like that. That's great. And it's a free event at the BCT on Monday. Um, gallery Walk is um, February 3rd. 5 to 8 p.m., 16 galleries doing great stuff uh, around Bloomington. Uh, the Cook Center um, specifically will be opening a uh, exhibit with the Center for Religion and the Human, featuring about 30 pieces from their collections and archives, which is really interesting. And then um, we're also opening uh, Black Lit, which is a poetry exhibit uh, hosted in collaboration with the Neil Marshall Black Culture Center Library. Um, and along with that, on February 10th, we'll be having a reading um, for Black Lit featuring all of the poets. I think we'll have about 10 poets this year um, uh, performing original work and then a few other keynote um, speakers. So there will be more promotional material on that in the coming days. In the coming days is what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I will get those done in the coming days. And I will circulate them on social media. I will have our interns poster around campus. And, uh, and in the community. So you'll be seeing stuff about that. But please come on by. Natalie, I have a quick question for you. Yeah, what's up? Oh, wait, no, I was, okay, receptionist. I was, I was just asking about the mm -hmm. Buster Chumley at MLK Junior Day. Oh, Got yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. <laughs> so I just want to say, I've been trying to work a little bit on this locating public art uh, and I will tell you, it's this is like um, Agatha Christie. <laughs> I have never in my life. It, it's just it's hysterical. So um, the the impression um, I mentioned it to some people today, and one of the women told me that she was a student uh, on a work study program, actually as part of the museum at IU, this is close to 50 years ago, and um, her, that what she was hired to do was there was no inventory at all at IU, and you know the kind of art they have. So she was supposed to go into all the different buildings, photograph, write down whatever it is that she could find. And one of the buildings that she had started out with was the Lily. So I mean, it's, it's kind of shocking that they didn't have anything. So. Uh, a couple of years later, uh, one of the women was cleaning in the lily, 
and discovered that there was a Remington that she had always that was always had been sitting there and it was gone, and nobody had any idea of what it was, what it looked like, what it anything, and the only reason they had any concept was because of this inventory that this young girl had done. So I went to look, um, just out of curiosity, at, at well, because before I had called IU to ask, did they have a department? I called the museum, everybody, nobody knew anything. Well, it, there was a, the, there was a program on Monday evening at the Mc, I can remember. McCollum? McCollum, yeah. And um, there was a, a, a wonderful girl there who was introducing stuff, and it turns out not, the university has a, a huge department and, and is extraordinarily sophisticated in what they're doing, and uh, they have uh, really some won wonderful descriptions about their mission and everything they're doing. And it's divided up into all the multiples that it should be. And I mean, I, it's all online, or a good portion of it, and it's very, very impressive. Um, and I thought, wow, you know, this is, you know, why, why did nobody know when I, when I made all the myriad phone calls that I did two years ago about this? Because it's huge, and it's sophisticated, and it's fabulous. Conversely, everybody that I have called in the city or not, it's like, well, duh. <laughs> so I believe that if there, I, I'm willing to bet if there was anything, this is probably as good as you get, that it's disappeared. I, I would be surprised if there's anything much that's going to show up. So you mean, I'm, the, you mean the, the works that are supposed to be things in City the, Hall here? or in, in any of the public buildings. And, oh. and plus the fact that the jurisdiction of the public buildings is broken up really. I'm sure there's some practicality in it, but, um, uh, and it just, it's not an issue for anybody to have looked at. But there is a woman who has, who's supposed to be in charge of historical buildings. Gloria? Yeah. And I said to her, by the way, do you know any good buildings that would make an art center? And she said, well, I do, actually. So there, she was telling me about all these buildings that are hidden in some parks or small things and other things. So maybe you're aware of them and I'm not. But some of them sounded really kind of interesting. So she's very busy right, right now, but she said that she... She sent me a list of some of it, but that maybe this is something that we could. She just sounded like a terrific resource and extremely. So she only works for the city. Yeah. Yes, um, Gloria yeah. Cohen. I knew her full name, but she she works in the um, housing and neighborhood development department, um, and she is the historic preservationist for the city. She sits on the um, commission for historic preservation for us. Um, but and, she she said yeah. she barely she has just maps. And maps of stuff. She doesn't even have a clear identification of a lot of the um, a lot of the buildings. But she was telling me about some of them that she was in, and she knew who had showed it to her. That were buried. I guess there's a lot of stuff buried in cascades, and buried behind other things. And she's some of them are like fairy gardens, and I don't know. You know, is she really elaborated or wow. not? But it really, it was very intriguing. So I thought that that was kind of cool. So we'll see what else everybody, you know, left a lot of messages and if there are other things. But I'd like if anybody can think of just, it, it could be an unorganized email, just shoot it out to me like, these are the public buildings or I may have seen something. I had been told that there was a lot of stuff at the bus kirk and that there was stuff in, in buried behind the upper lofts and, and things, but who knows if it's still there. So um, any anything anybody else knows, any other rumors or anything, or any other lists of buildings, you know, especially if there are people here who've grown up here, that's, that's what I'm gonna try to find, or people who really can remember that from when there were aquans that I saw. It seems like it would be best to go through some of the city for that because, I mean, 
again, I think for what the BAC's remit is, right, like, it, it's interesting what's in county buildings, but we don't control it, right? It's interesting what's in yeah. maybe federal or state buildings, but we don't control it. So I, I, we, I think we'd have to narrow it down to, like, actual, like, city buildings. No, I'm just looking right? at, right now, I'm just looking yeah. at city, yeah. And uh, nothing, nothing with county, because uh, I don't think the county's speaking to us, but... Um, yeah, and you know, I just have it in my head, and it may be unrealistic, that there, uh, I was told today about a couple of buildings actually that are, one that was owned by Cook, but there are, I think, um, I don't know, they're closer to Ellisville, hmm. but that there are old houses, you know, that there's stuff around, and it's just, so just ask, you know, if you have family who's been here for a while or you know what do you remember or somebody's going to come up with something um I'll, i'm going to add a little to this as well thank you babette so <laughs> babette and i had a conversation last night about just like uh babette taking on doing some initial works the thing both to round out the spreadsheet that i think was started several years ago of all public art in the city that just needs to be included. Um, and so Babette is gonna do a few initial sleuthing moves to get that started. Once that's done, we'll talk about next steps for identifying folks who can help us fill the gaps um, of that spreadsheet. Um, we're also talking about, so as you know, you know, we've talked about this last year, um, one of the recommendations of the feasibility study that the city did last year um, in tandem with Trahan Architects was um, exploring options for what an arts incubator would look like here in Bloomington. And, you know, we've got, you know, our pine sky vision on this uh, existing facility in Hopewell, but, you know, we know that is, you know, if that is a real thing, that is three to five years off. So the question is, what other existing spaces are there in the city now that we could use to beta test that model that Trey Han has proposed in the meantime? So Babette is taking the initiative to do some of those work, explore what those facilities are, and then I am also working with someone I'm contracting with um, for the 2023 year to just do a more robust list of what are these facilities, you know, what are the realities of us being able to use them to test this kind of model? Again, this is the beginnings of this exploration. Um, we're going to work to develop this over this year. And as we're doing that work, I will keep the commission informed. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, colleagues. You know, when I drove in here, I realized like two buildings down, uh, 41 North Morton, there is another thing that was part of the showers. It's kind of semi, has anybody ever been in there? You're talking about the, by, by the mill, the kiln building? It's not that else? far down. This is right on Morton. And it's past this whole complex, and then there's another old building, and then it's a big brick building. You're not talking about the old press, are you? Yeah, you press building. Yeah. Are you press building? I don't, I, I don't know. I could be. In 10th um, or something? Or she, yeah. said, yeah. she said it's the southeast yeah. portion of the old showers, 401 North Morton. That's the. Is that a different? That's connected to us. That's the other portion of the showers building is what you see when you go to the Trades District garage. Um, when we were hanging out in that parking lot mm -hmm. for the Trades District installation celebration, that is currently owned by Cook. Um, there is. Oh, really? Yes, there is some negotiation for the city to potentially take that facility over and potentially house some fire and police departments. There, that is an ongoing negotiation that has not been resolved one way or another yet. I'm not sure she's talking about that one because I, I kind of thought this was, I, it could be what you're talking about. It's, it's, it could also be, a, yeah, that could also be. It's the be one the you're talking press. about? Yeah. Yes, this is uh, 401. I have. She said it was on her listed as city owned, which well, doesn't North mean Martin it was. Is here. That's where we are right she now. She said that it's a yeah. portion of this. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's not. That's, that's the cook owns. Yeah, that's the cook so that's owns. Cook space. owns it. I wonder why she gave me that on her list. Then. A small aside about the press building. IU <laughs> still has my office listed in that press <laughs> building. So when I, was, <laughs> when I was a student again, people were sending me things to that condemned building. Oh my <laughs> gosh, does that give us fair game to, because that is city owned and that was one of the spaces I was like, 
do something there. It's, it's so beautiful, <laughs> but I think it was I think it was asbestos in it. Yeah. It was oh, yeah, man. it was it was a mess. But the the office in the front's beautiful. I mean, have you been inside? <laughs> no. I just walked by it. Which I think they say now is it's really no big deal until you try to take it out. It's so they 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 want to keep going for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And then continue this conversation. But it's can be done. Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's, um, let's move quickly to public comment, which yeah. I, I don't believe there is. I, I'm assuming okay. that was it for like commissioner yeah. announcements. I just want to give, I guess. Can I make a, well, I'm going to make one uh, staff oh. announcement <laughs> um, that's event related. So. One of the grants that we funded and successfully got money out the door for at the beginning of 22 is uh, Visit Bloomington and the Mills collaboration for Freeze Fest. Freeze oh, Fest yeah, yeah. is happening uh, next Friday, January 20th. Um, Chaz has also taken it upon herself to project manage that because the person who has done that in previous years left. Um, so she's also been working on that um, on top of her duties uh, as special project managers doing art and small business. So HS, she's amazing. Um, but um, so, you know, that was a partially BAC funded thing. Um, so we are all invited to go on January 20th if you would like a little VIP pass to the warming station. Please let us know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so January 20th. January 20th, correct. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I, I regrettably missed the heavy metal chainsaw off last oh. year, which is they play heavy metal music and two people compete to chainsaw the best ice sculpture. So. As performance art. Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. It yeah. Like it's both Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah, stuff happens different times. Different. Yeah. I think I think just, the the VIP access is on the evening of the twentieth. Yeah. Okay. Which is yeah. which is Saturday or Friday? Friday. 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 Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so I think um, that is all for commissioner announcements. Yeah. I don't see anybody. Don't believe Online. we have any public comments. Um, so yeah, we will go ahead and call this meeting um, to adjourn a little bit early, but um, well, it sounds like between the public arts master plan and the task bylaws task force coming up in recent meetings, we'll have plenty to talk about and discuss uh, <laughs> at upcoming meetings, so yeah. yeah. All right. No Thank shortage you. of stuff, all right, thanks all. Um, I also just wanna share, so today is also Chaz's birthday. Uh, Thank you for everyone signing the card. Suzanne, if you'd like to sign it. Um, I forgot, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Oh, motion to sure, we better. Yeah, yeah I'm so I'm sorry. Well, okay, <laughs> thanks, y'all. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs>